We are live. Welcome to Unscan or Evil Review and Thoughts film. I realize this video is long, but if you're only interested in the spoiler review, that part of the video is fairly comparatively short, or at least that's the idea. To see its length, check the time codes in the description box. Now, I start this video with a review, most likely with zero spoilers, including for the source material. If I spoil anything, I will warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoiler so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for the subject, including for the source material, including discussing the ending, and I will no longer be warning before I do so. Now, let's see, so... Yeah, so, the plot. In Sweden, in the late 1950s, Eric, a teenager, is sent to a private boarding school, Sunnyhill. He's been starting fights at school. Most adults don't even ask why, though the audience knows it's that his stepfather beats him as punishment for the tiniest infraction. And this time he got especially vicious, so his mother sells some family heirlooms so he can go to a private boarding school. When he gets there, things are even worse, and I've seen some people ask, why doesn't he just go to a different school? Where would the money for that come from? I, I don't think the school itself would refund that money unless they sue them or something, and where would the money for a lawyer to sue them come from? It's also There's also some chance that the next place may be just as bad, and he actually, now that I think about it, I'm not 100% sure if that's also in the film, but in the book, the, the principal who throws him out of the first school he is in, he has sent a letter to all the other principals. So this private boarding school is the only one that isn't going to immediately just refuse to even take him in. Now, if this is something you've never heard of, this is a drama. It's not a horror movie, as some had logic, very logically guessed that it might be from the title. It was released in 2003, directed by, okay, here we go, I am, I'm going to try to pronounce the Swedish names in a, yeah, I, I, my, my Swedish pronunciations are not amazing, but I'll, I'll do my best. It was directed by Mikael Hofström. He both directed and co-wrote, and it was based on the semi-autobiographical novel by Jan... See, I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm just going to guess Gilu. Originally, I meant to listen to just 10 minutes per day f to, to go through the... You know, it's, it's the, the, the audiobook is three hours long, so I meant to just do 10 minutes so and so many times until I had listened to three hours. I ended up listening through two hours of the three hour length in a single day and the last hour in another one day. It's the, it is the only of his novels that I have read or listened to. Something that makes it even more effective is the sort of journalistic distance. At times it doesn't read, well listen, as much like personal experiences as an accurate objective description of reality. Yeah, it's, it's excellent, although the violence and unfairness make it a tough listen, and the same goes for the movie. Now, and yeah, the, the there is significantly more violence in the book than there is in the movie. I, I feel like they... Yeah, both both violence and unfairness. I feel like this movie was an attempt to make it more palatable for a mainstream audience. And it's also just a, it's a thing, you know, if you if you write a book, I mean, depending on, you know, you, if, if you write some really extreme stuff, you may need to have a, you know, your, your publisher will need to have a lot of bravery to publish it. But if you put, if, if you fill a three hour book with, 
an insane amount of violence, you can still get that published. The movie is not much shorter than the book. It's, you know, it's, it's less than two hours, but it's still not, like, but there's, there's significantly less violence in the movie, and they also kind of make some of Eric's traits, you know, some of them they tone down, some of them they, they focus more on. They were trying to make it as palatable as possible for a mainstream movie-watching audience, even though, you know, some Scandinavian movies do get very extreme. But the... Yeah. I, th I guess I'll just very briefly say, I, th I think we Scandinavians make some incredibly good movies sometimes. Sometimes there are some issues, but yeah, I'd, I'd say some of the best movies ever made were made here in Scandinavia. Sometimes people excuse me, don't think I have a lot of pride for being Scandinavian, but I do, I just don't express it as strongly as some people might expect me to frequently. But yeah, the, the because of all the unfairness and brutal violence in the book, you know, the, the title, the book brings up the, the concept of evil I think I think it is briefly touched upon in the movie, but it's more of a thing in the book. Basically, you know, the the principal of the first school, the you know, when when he's what's it called? Expelling Eric from the school, he says there is only one word for people like you, and that word is evil. Like, yeah, I think that's in the movie as well. And it it is this, uh, yeah. It's a it's a bigger thing in in the book than in the movie. I ultimately I do think it makes sense that the movie is called Evil, but it's it makes more sense in the book. And let's see. Yeah, and the in in the book, there's this. Uh, I guess technically, some of these are spoilers. Okay, so some spoilers for the book. In the book, you know, there's a gang. Eric was the leader of that gang, and the gang gets caught shoplifting. And the shoplifting is alluded to in the movie. They don't go into a lot of detail. Basically, the other gang members say they don't want to do those things, but Eric scares them. Now, this could be read as them throwing him under the bus, getting rid of him because they don't like him as a leader, but they're not going to stop being a gang. They're just going to get a different leader. The principal doesn't see the bad things that have been done to Eric that explain why Eric is the way he is, and the line actually leads Eric to wonder if it's true. You know, we all know that evil begets more evil, and we and Eric wonder if he, if Eric has become evil via his efforts to defend himself and others against evil, frequently in the form of authoritarian teachers in the school, threatening violence over minor infractions. And, let's see... Yeah, no more spoilers for the time being. The book makes a bigger thing out of Eric standing up for other people. In, yeah, in, in the film, he stands up for himself. He stands up for his friend Pierre. And uh, Pierre, bleh, friend and roommate Pierre Tanguy. But the... Um, let's see. But yeah, in, in both cases, you know, the, the stepfather's violence to... to towards Eric is why Eric is violent and ultimately yeah something that happens very early in the book is that Eric you know some Eric pontificates on how some of the teachers use violence sometimes even just for you know speaking out of turn or something but others don't use violence and he never like the, the teachers who aren't violent 
Eric doesn't challenge their authority. He's not... And, and really, the, the movie... Yeah, I'd, I'd say the, in, the, in the movie, it's basically that he challenges some unfairness, but it's not as sort of... The movie does underline that that's why he's doing it. He's not just challenging authority for no reason. He's challenging authority when they're being unfair in how they wield their power. Now the but but yeah the the movie has you know there there's at least three teachers who say that Eric is very intelligent although I don't know why I mean that is the thing in both the book and the movie if Eric wasn't intelligent his violence would still like eh. there are people who think that. If, if you're intelligent, it's okay to use violence. If you're not intelligent, it's not. Anyway, now the... Let's see. But yeah, I, f I feel like the movie could have had a short montage, just like a few minutes, two or three minutes, I think, would have done it. Just briefly show him provoking a violent teacher, easily taking a beating, as he does in the book. Show him and the other students paying close attention to a nonviolent teacher. Maybe each of these brief bits should start with like a shot of where the violent teachers keep their stick that they use and then we see the nonviolent teacher doesn't have one that sets up that they're not violent which in in the book there's this very specific very early occurrence where one of the teachers threatens the students and as far as i understand this is basically like i guess he's just been hired or something so this is the first time he talks to these students and immediately he says I like hitting children with this stick. And Eric thinks to himself, I don't think that stick's going to hurt that much. And then he, he says, you know, and, and the teacher does that ridiculous thing where he says, would anybody like to try? And Eric's like, sure, why not? And, and the teacher's like, well, no, I, I said, do you, does anyone want me to beat them with this stick? I, I didn't offer cookies. And, and Eric's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And, you know, and, and he, he humiliates the teacher. And it's very clear that he's doing this because, yeah, he, he spells it out. He literally says, you think that you're better than us by threatening violence. That doesn't make you better. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, you know, the fact that he only challenges unfair authority is incredibly important to the character in the book and I do think that the movie would be stronger if it did have that you know it, it's a short book you really don't have to remove all that much to avoid the adaptation being too long you know this this is not one of those cases where the the book is like a brick and you you know anyway now Yeah, so in the book, the very first thing is the stepfather's violence towards Eric and how Eric has basically, you know, he, he has determined that the only ways to limit how much violence, you know, yeah, he, he, he knows some of the ways to limit how much violence the father does. Yeah, in the, in the book, it's the father, not the stepfather. You know, he, he doesn't, there's no way to avoid the father hitting him completely he can only you know he yeah he can only limit how how bad it gets and you know the the movie does the the movie only does this very briefly at at the start but it does you know i i read some reviews say that the movie starts with eric in a fight in school and technically that is one of the very first things we see but the very first thing is eric like, we, we briefly hear a narration of him, like, thinking to himself, you know, the, 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 let me think, I think it is, yeah, I'm trying to juggle what's in the book and what's in the movie, let's see, yeah, I, I think it was that, you know, he's trying to determine, or he's, he's thinking about, well, you know, if I, 
if this, this, or this, then it means less hitting by him, but there's no... But but yeah, the the you know some some people said because of the the fight in the school, some people thought that he was evil based on that. Which I don't know. I mean, I I never really thought of it that way. I always thought of it as the stepfather taught him violence. But you know, some some people don't. Yeah, they they only see the result. They don't think about how did we get there. But yeah, basically, the idea of the movie is a scathing indictment of the violence that takes place unpunished in private boarding schools, at the very least, the way it was until and including the 1950s. And, let's see. Yeah, basically, you know, the... the in, in the boarding school, it's the older students using violence against the younger students. And these younger students will one day, you know, the, the, as they grow older, they become older students, and then they're the ones inflicting violence on younger students. Like a mean-spirited AI exercise bike, it's a vicious cycle. And let's see. So, yeah, some of, you know, in, a, in addition to the, the students using violence being older than Eric, class struggles also enter into it. Eric is lower class and the seniors are upper class. Now, I to, to briefly talk about the, the controversies that this, yeah, that, that come with this. I'm not going to be talking about the poli polit political beliefs of Yan Yilu, the author of the book, except for where it's relevant to this particular movie and its source material book. I try to have empathy towards everyone, but I find it extremely difficult to have empathy for bullies. So if something in this video sounds like I'm making excuses for bullies, I just want to put out there, I'm not. There is no excuse for bullying. Now, let's see. Some, sometimes I'm not the best communicator. Sometimes. Let's see. Yeah, so the book and to an extent the film let's see yeah yeah both do an incredible job of communicating something that i personally consider important to understand relationships between people something that i've researched and in some cases experienced firsthand many people who have power and wield it do not understand to be fair some of them do understand they just don't care if you expect someone to respect a person with authority and power, you have to treat them better when they do something right, or at least attempt to, than when they do something wrong. You cannot expect someone to respect authority who is treated equally badly when they do something right as when they do something wrong. And something that the book and the movie also go into is that if you let awful people do what they want without fairness or expectation of punishment for doing something wrong, there are a number of them who will go as far as they possibly can to treat others badly. Given that I'm giving this such a glowing review and saying so many positive things about book and movie, I feel like maybe it's best that I clarify something, clear up a potential misunderstanding, Sometimes people get the idea that I myself am violent. Since my childhood, I have always felt violence outside of fiction, wherein it can accomplish a number of things, is only ever okay when it prevents greater violence. Threats of violence are only okay when they're the most effective way to convince someone not to be violent. I've never myself been a violent person. I think one of the reasons sometimes people get this idea is that I've been in situations where people expected me to get involved in violence and because I didn't, they think that the people I didn't get violent with were more afraid of me due to violence that happened without these onlookers seeing it. I want to preface the following with saying I don't judge people who did get involved with violence and or who feared violence because I myself have been very fortunate to have been involved in very few genuinely violent situations, but the main reason that I have very rarely gotten involved with violence 
is that the threat of violence by my peers has never scared me. When I was younger, I did fear my parents, but that's in the past. I feared my mother because she was abusive, both physically and verbally. My father, for reasons that I will not get into here, he was never violent, not with me, in general, not in any situation that did not 100% require him to respond to violence. He has never hit any of his kids. But my peers, I never fear violence from, and almost every single bully that I've encountered in my, vi in my life could tell. I don't know if they thought that I would respond with violence if they attacked me. Maybe, you know, honestly, the thought that they might has not cost me a single second of sleep in my life. I think that for many of them, the reason that they might use violence against me or anyone else is they wanted to intimidate. And when they realized that I wouldn't be intimidated by them, they simply didn't get violent with me. Once again, I want to stress, this is not something that works for everyone. I have been very fortunate to extremely rarely deal with bullies who would have gotten violent despite me not fearing them. And that when someone did attack me, that I was not in a situation where they would have been able to get away at least in the short term, with, say, attacking with a blunt object that could do serious damage. I'm not sure that I can think of a single time in my life where someone came at me with something other than punches and kicks. And I'm not sure I've ever been, like, attacked by more than one person at a time. It was rarely someone much bigger or stronger than me. And as such, it wasn't difficult to face them. I never felt a reason to fear them. Any human being that gets much of a chance to go against authority will do so at least once. Because of that, it is extremely important to examine how the authority figures respond and whether or not it was particularly realistic for the person going against the authority figure to, for example, have enough food to eat. I'm intentionally choosing something that many, perhaps most people, would agree is something that would be very difficult to simply ignore. The, the need that the authority figure is preventing being met, rather than getting into examples where it might distract if some people think you should be able to get by without violating the authority figure. I know some, who, some people would claim that even if, you know, the clothes on your back have holes in them to the point where you can't keep warm, you shouldn't violate authority to get clothes if they hadn't gone against the authority. I guess I will just briefly say, yeah, just really quickly, because I did not write it down anywhere else. Okay, so this is a spoiler for the book and the movie. In the book, on multiple occasions, the idea of going to the hospital to recover from being beaten is brought up, and it happens on the boarding school. It happens to Eric, and it has happened to others. In the movie, the the hospital only the idea of going to the hospital only comes up at the very end when he's talking to the stepfather, and because it's only coming up then, it feels kind of excessive to bring up the hospital since the hospital has been brought up earlier. With that said, it's possible that it was brought up and the subtitler didn't keep up with it. I don't speak Swedish, so I don't know, but yeah, no more spoilers for the time being. Now, yeah, I'm not, in, in the movie, it's not really, it, it doesn't really appear in, in the movie itself, but in the book, you know, the, the book describes legitimately deep anxiety and trauma. In, in the book, there's more than one case where Eric knows that something must have happened, but he has no memory of it because of trauma. On multiple occasions in the book, we hear Eric's thoughts, and in the film, you know, at the very, very start, there is brief narration of, of us hearing his thoughts. But yeah, we hear Eric's thoughts in the books, and he describes legitimate fear of how a violent situation will play out, of the pain and the trauma. A lot of the physical wounds will heal in time, especially with the help of doctors, but the emotional damage lasts on. I disagree with those who say that he's a Gary Stu. He does make mistakes. At times, he can be very detached in his description of violence, like it's happening to someone else, like he's a general sending troops into battle. And, 
Let's see. Yeah, it, it's clearer in the book than in the movie. Yeah, I'll just briefly say, if you like the movie, the book is way better, and water is wet, and the sky is blue. You know, this is not news to anyone. If there is a book, the book is almost always better. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, in the book, to a lesser extent in the movie, Eric doesn't love violence. In fact, he hates it. But he realizes that if he never uses violence, or in the case of at home, hadn't figured out a way to take violence, some of the authority figures in the different schools as well as his home will use even more violence against him and against those who are weaker than him. He despises violence wielded unfairly by authority figures, and he fights it wherever he can, a number of times to his own detriment. And Eric finds he can't get by without angering authority figures, not in his home, not in either of his schools. All he wants is to not have someone use violence against him, physical or, uh, let's see, emotional or, yeah, abuse. He doesn't want others to be abusive towards him, physically and otherwise. And, yeah, he continually gets in trouble with authorities. Not because he has no respect for anyone's authority, not because he wants to take away every authority figure's power, which is, of course, something that authority figures immediately, you know, the moment that someone defies an authority figure, a lot of authority figures immediately, like, on a deep primal level, they're like, is this it? Is this when I lose power? And am I going to be treated as badly as I've treated others? Almost all authority figures have at some point treated someone unfairly even the ones who go out of their way to avoid doing so. And this is again where I know I'm sometimes I come across I'm not a communist. I I'm a social democrat. I'm not saying that all communists are the same either. I'm not personally one. Anyway, but because he refuses to stand idle by while authority figures unfairly wield violence and these authority figures, rather than admitting that the way they wield the violence is unfair, use other authority of theirs to try to make his life worse. Not because they think that it will make the world a better place, because several of them do acknowledge that he's not disrespectful to everyone's authority. I'm not going to be debating anarchism in this movie, or any other, other ideology that believes the world would be better off if there are no individual authority figures, if the power lay entirely in the people's hands. Basically, the way I see it, if someone starts use, starts abusing their authority, we should almost immediately look at whether they should maybe be stripped from that authority and be replaced by someone else. And I think that's the maybe the only way to minimize abuse by authority figures, is to, if they do abuse someone, to make it so that it's it's very it's a uh, yeah i guess easy it is easy to remove them from power if they are excuse me if they are you abusing their authority to hurt people i'm just making the point that one second yeah in you know in the book that's not what he's trying to do but it's not because these authority figures think that the world would be a better place if people like Eric have even less power than he already does. It is because they cannot handle that he challenges authority, no matter how justified he is in doing so. And he's, in, in the book especially, but also a few times in the movie, he will literally point out, and he's not like, he's not screaming, he's not being like threatening or like throwing stuff he's just very calmly looking straight at them and pointing out this is not fair and here's why it isn't fair and they can't handle it and thankfully things have gotten better but it is still yeah there is only one instance in which the authority figures do believe that they're making the world a better place and it is because they see that he rules from fear, either completely missing that 
that's what they're doing, or maybe they don't like that he rules through fear, as you know, since they do, they feel like he shouldn't. It's unacceptable to them because he ha he doesn't have a high enough status. He rules his gang through fear because if he's not a member of the gang, the gang will use violence against him. You know, he's not some superhuman. He he does sometimes do things that lead to bad results, but in both, it is very clear that he's driven by a hatred of unfairness. And again, that does come across stronger in the book. And other than including more narration, I'm not sure if the movie could really have done that. And and clearly, they just they did not want to use narration very much at all. And for a lot of movies, that choice does make sense. Yeah, you know, I, I stand by that the, the Hunger Games, all four movies, are very strong, very good adaptations, despite... Or not despite. Th those are movies based on books with, like, the... Let's see, I guess... Is it called narration in a book? It... We in in the in those three books we are constantly hearing reading Katniss's thoughts, but in the movies that they they chose to handle it, you know, ba basically, yeah, to to not really do that, and those are still really strong movies, and I do think this is also a very very good movie. Now. As I've said, I don't think... One second... As I've said, I don't think violence should be used in real life if... Yeah, un unless it's preventing greater violence. You know, hypothetically, if, you know, if, if someone is about to is is threatening to kill someone and it seems a very serious threat and they have a weapon or something you know let's say that they have you know they they have a knife or something and you can't get the knife out of their hand without like you know maybe maybe you 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 know end up ah, let me think like if you if you break one of their bones or something, or, you know, threaten them with a knife or something. Other than that, it's just not okay, but, so, so yeah, obviously I'm not saying that it was ever okay that violence against children by adults was legal, but I think it is important to remember when reading the book or watching the movie, at the time, you know, in the 1950s in Sweden, it was still legal for parents and teachers to be children. I say that because if you read or watch and you keep expecting for someone to realize that children are being beaten and the people who beat them are punished by police, that simply isn't going to happen even though it would obviously be the right thing. And let's see. Yeah, see that? The book clearly depicts that some of the teachers at Eric's first school used violence against the students including Eric, but not limited to Eric. And I do think that the movie would be stronger if it just briefly showed... It It does a good job of... Uh, let's see. It draws a parallel between Eric being hit by his stepfather and Eric getting in violent fights at school. But it doesn't also point out that the teachers at Eric's school are also violent and ultimately it's not that's not something that violence isn't something that uh, let me think. yeah actually anyway the the I think they should have shown that Eric you know that that some of the teachers are also willing to use violence it really yeah and and 
ultimately we also we don't know why it is he gets in he's he's in the fight at the start of the movie which honestly in the book there's not a single instance of violence where we don't know exactly why it's like again we're constantly privy to eric's thoughts and thought process and there's never there's nothing resembling random violence with eric as the source in the entire book there is always a reason for it and i do think that the yeah it, it would have been stronger if there was a clear like maybe if like the yeah like the movie already does show that the the ah, one second. the movie does show that Eric's stepfather hits him, but the the I, th I think it would may, maybe if it showed Eric's stepfather hitting him, and then it showed like may yeah and maybe maybe have him say yeah let's let's say that. When Eric's stepfather hits him, he says, this is the only way you'll learn. And then before the, the fight between Eric and the other boy, the other boy, you know, maybe he attacks someone smaller than him or something. He, he does something violent. And then he says, it's the only way you'll learn. And so Eric, you know, may, maybe maybe even have like an overlay of, of his stepfather's voice again, just draw a parallel to that, that Eric is attacking this other kid because he believes the other kid is a bully like his father. The, yeah, I, I think the movie would be stronger if we knew exactly why. And, and again, it's possible that at some point in the movie it was said in Swedish and the subtitler didn't you know, either didn't pick it up or maybe it went by too fast, but from my perspective, only reading the subtitles, I'm almost certain it was never brought up exactly why that fight happened. Now, on the subject of whether the older students beating and bullying the younger students, which I'm fairly certain wasn't legal for the adults to allow to happen, which is what we see in the movie, I have not been able to find confirmation. I mean, Yangilu says that it happened the way he describes it in the book. There are definitely things in the book that are very hard to believe, and I think it was, um, I think it might be that the idea, it, it feels very, When we hear that it's the older students that are doing these things, it sounds... I think a lot of people wouldn't believe it if he had written in the book that these are the things that the teachers were doing. That's one thing. And I think there's also a number of people who would read the book and say, teachers are allowed to hit students. That's just how it is. I don't care how bad it is in in this instance. That's just how it is. And the the yeah, I think those are two of the main reasons why he I I find it very difficult to believe personally that the teachers would know just how bad the the elder students were in in discipline punishment and just let it happen i guess maybe another thing is yeah no never mind honestly i'm probably going to keep going back and forth between english and swedish pronunciation of the names you know in in this video so just you know if that's something that's going to bother you, strap in. Sorry. Can't help it. Now, this was written by Michael Hofström and Hans Gonossen. And I honestly, I don't know other 
what what else they written or I looked up what else they had written, but it's not something I know. I'm not very familiar with Swedish films. You know, basically this and yeah, I'll just I'll just very briefly swear because this is the title of the movie, fucking Omar or in English, show me love. I I do kind of love that's that's such an incredible like that really tell like the the you know the people who who were gonna send it into English speaking audiences took one look and said. We can't put the F word in the title. It's no, no one's gonna. You, you have to find some other. It's just like show me love. It sounds like this gentle, which technically, you know, I mean, in a lot of ways, that movie, it makes more sense to call it show me love. But anyway, yeah, this show me love and the Millennium trilogy are just about all the Swedish movies I've seen. I have watched a number of other Scandinavian. I have watched a number of movies about bullying in schools, you know, so it's possible that in this video I will be comparing the book and movie, yeah, this movie and its book to A History of Violence, Hold Me Tight, My Good Enemy. I doubt I would compare this very much to Bang Bang You're Dead, as I simply don't see that many things that they have in common. And I would say. In a lot of ways, the the script does make the most of what, you know, the a lot of the things they change from the book. I can completely understand. They they really like. It's one thing to read about this. I mean, it's 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 still painful to read in in the not in the way that it's excuse me poorly written, but yeah, I think you know what I mean. But the the actually seeing it, yeah, it's it's really yeah. Now, let's see the the it handles plot twists fairly well. I'd say it's a it's basically the right amount. Some people felt there were a few too many twists, and I can see what they mean, but I don't quite agree. And yeah, so the direction is very focused, and yeah, Mikael Hofström has directed one other movie I've seen, and I know, you don't have to tell me, I know the one other movie he's directed that I've seen is 1408. He did the best he could with that one, you know, they, they, yeah. And that movie isn't terrible, it just has a few flaws that make it frustrating, but, I mean, I, I, you know, it's, it's a movie based on a Stephen King, one of the written works of Stephen King, you know, countless of those are, don't live up to the potential, let's go with that. Yeah, the fact that he's directed that movie doesn't make me think less of this one. And I would say he definitely understood how to best make it work. And I would like, you know, it's possible that the, you know, the director and writers did movies similar to this, and I just haven't seen them yet. I, I would very much like to. I think they did a really, really good job. Now, let's see, so the, let's see, I guess, is this a spoiler? I guess I'll treat it as a spoiler. So anyway, talking about the, the opening of the movie, I'm going to start with some spoilers for the, for the book. In the book, the thing that gets Eric kicked out of school is not a brutal fight. It's when the gang that Eric is the leader of steal LP records and get caught. Now, it appears the reason that the gang agreed to steal the records is because they were afraid of what Eric would do if they refused, although that may have just been the excuse they gave. 
So it is related to the violence that the book and movie are very much about, but it's not quite as direct and visible as in the movie where it is because of the fight. I think both work well for their medium. Now, yeah, so the, the start does a very good job of setting up, let's see, basically, yeah, it does a good job setting up the rest of the movie, and mostly the rest of the movie does a good job of paying off the, the setup. But, yeah, you know, the, the very first thing you show your audience in a movie is extremely important because it is going to color the rest of the movie, the the entire rest of the movie, excuse me, is going to be very heavily affected by the very first thing you show them. And yeah, in this, immediately we see a close-up of Eric's face. I think at the very start you can only see his eyes. And I think the camera like zooms out or dollies out or something and we hear his thoughts as he's you know basically going over how to avoid the stepfather hitting him as much as he might again not that he can keep the stepfather from hitting him at all just and you know right after the the stepfather hits him we see him fighting at school and yeah, it, it sets up that this is, you know, for basically, <clears throat> at the boarding school, there is a rule that you are expelled if you hit one of the older children. And basically, that's true, both movie and book. And basically, that means that a bunch of the time, Eric has to restrain himself from using violence against them and for, you know because of that it is important to show that it's not he's not afraid of violence afraid of getting into fights and he's not it's not that he would never himself use physical violence against someone else under any circumstances because it really you know for the entire rest of you know, again, it's stronger in the book because we're constantly reading his thoughts where he's thinking, well, if I do that, I get expelled. But in the movie, it is also very clear he does, yeah, you know, he, he puts up with it and doesn't hit back because of the, excuse me, because of the, the, ah, what's it called? Yeah, be because of expulsion, but not because he has a problem with using violence ever. And some have said that aspects of the ending are perhaps a tad convenient, but the ending does resolve the, the plot lines. And yeah, I'm not giving, giving away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but it is an ending. It's not one of those movies that just stop, you know, by, by the end of the movie, the 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 various storylines have been resolved and yeah it never loses your interest along the way now yeah so as an adaptation it is strong but i do think the i don't know i'll i'll fully grant the movie would have been extremely different if there had been narration you know if this had gone the way of like American Psycho, which is a movie where he is constantly narrating about his desire for violence, you know, or his thoughts. Yeah, if it was this, it's it wouldn't be a desire for violence, but his thoughts on using violence and such. And yeah, I don't know. I suppose. I guess what I'll say is I would have liked to see a version of the movie where we are hearing his narration a lot, because in this movie it is not very frequent. And yeah, you know, that's that's one of the biggest changes and the other and then you have the toning down of the violence and making Eric somewhat more palatable. Because in the I think in the book he basically comes across as the 
the closest to like basically most of the characters in the book like there there's not that many characters that are never at all engaged in violence there's there's some there's some shades of gray to eric but he's not like yeah you know in in the in the book it is a lot more i th i think they did the best they could with and they did do a good job now as far as the cast i would say the the actors understood how to make it work they understood their characters very well the the dvd has some behind the scenes and yeah it, it clearly they understand their characters very well now so yeah the once again the very first thing the very first thing we see in a movie i've already talked about the very first thing we see specific characters do also really defines them and again the the stepfather almost immediately he's hitting eric and eric immediately we're seeing that he's you know he's it's just a reality he can't stop his stepfather hitting him he can only limit how many times he hits him now yeah so andreas wilson plays eric ponty intelligent willing to use violence hates unfairness and yeah due to his stepdad hitting him, hitting him he he hates his his stepdad now some some viewers said that they hated eric at first and only later came to like him i mean no the first time i watched this movie i hadn't read the book and I still immediately felt like the only reason Eric is violent is because his stepfather hits him. So, but, but yeah, you know, some people focus more on the result than how, how, yeah, how we got there. Really briefly, I forget if I've written down elsewhere to say, so I'll just say it here to make sure I don't forget it. I have watched this movie at least twice, possibly three times. The most recent time I watched it was right before hitting record, so that it would be fresh in my mind. Now, Henrik Lundström plays Pierre Tanguy, not physically adept, basically a nerd, and he's bullied for that, and sometimes the bullies focus on him to get to Eric since they're friends. After all, no man is an island, but there are quite a few women who are peninsulas. And Gustav Skarsgård plays Otto Silverhirn or Silverstun in something like that in, in English. And yeah, apparently it is ah, Stellan Skarsgård's son. And we love to hate this guy. He does such a great job. Just the, the look on his face, like you hate this guy from immediately. And Linda Siliakus plays Ma Maja. Very sweet. You understand why Eric falls for her and why she falls for him. Some viewers find it frustrating that the romance takes up as much of the movie as it does, pointing out in the book very, very little is about the romance. I think they felt that they needed to make the movie more accessible. I think it worked. They are sweet together also. And just, yeah, it's, it's this... They, they couldn't have, I agree that it dil, di, dilutes, I think is the term, the, the movie, but it, it is basically, like, I mean, the book, I mean, I, I guess they're in love, but it's not that, it doesn't come that strongly, you know, the, both of them hate unfairness. And you know that's true in both book and book and movie. But in the in the book, I was honestly kind of surprised. I it had been years since I last watched the movie, and I had forgotten that there was a romance in the movie. So when she showed up in the book, I thought that it wasn't. I I didn't think that they were in love with each other at first. You know, I I thought it was just oh another friend. But yeah, although you know.
know, there are some people who don't think that men, straight men and straight women can be friends without ending up together, so maybe it's that. And, let's see, Johann Rabeus, Eric's step, stepfather, we really hate him, and he does a really great job, and, like, in, in the behind the scenes, he clearly understood why his character is the way he is. And, yeah, I think I'm just going to go, yeah. Marie Richardson plays Eric's mother. You can tell she cares about the stepdad hitting Eric, but she's too anxious to help. Now, I think an argument could be made that there is some overacting, at least a little of the time, for some of the very negatively depicted characters, but largely I would say it's, you know, it's... An... Eric himself can be fairly understated. There's a lot going on behind his eyes that he isn't saying, but a lot of the acting... I would say almost all the acting is really, really great. And the, yeah, so the, the, the characterization is quite good. And we, we see several of the characters in tremendously varied circumstances. So we see what they're like when things are going well, how they respond to things going wrong, etc. You know, we, we see right away that Eric is frequently hit by his stepfather, and there is this... Ah, and that that leads to violence in school that he's involved in. So, so we know that that's, you know, but then not long after, you know, within the first several minutes, he sees that his mother is selling a bunch of heirlooms and she explains that it's going to pay for private boarding school and we can very clearly tell he does care about her he does want to live up to her you know yeah so it it becomes clear that he's not just it's not that he cares about no one And the, the cinematography is quite good. The editing is great. There are some really effective montages of life in the boarding school so that it feels like more than just several situations. It is a seemingly inescapable series of events. There are very few special effects, but what little there is is well used. The, the stunts are very convincing, the, the fights are very visceral, and the production design does a good job getting across the upper class nature of the boarding school and has period accurate detail. I mean, the, this was filmed in like 2005, and it is set, you know, I forget exactly, I, let's say 50 years earlier, something like that. That is, you know, a lot of things look substantially different. Now, let's see. Oh, sorry, it was filmed in 2002. Not sure why it wasn't released until 2003. Oh, was it maybe they kept, I feel like I heard that they kept editing it to figure out exactly how much, I, anyway. Let's see, the, but, but yeah, some of the, Shot on sets and on locations, as far as I can tell. And the fights can get very intense. They're not as long or as detailed as in the book, but they are, yeah. And, yeah, so the, the antagonist, Silverstone, is very... Like, we, we really love to hate him, and the relationship between him and Eric, you know, we, we really cannot wait for the, for Eric to take him out, basically. And it is easy to follow, it's meant to be, and I think that was the right decision. 
Now, some of the music is 60s pop songs. At times, the music can be very dramatic and intense. I think I read at least one person saying that some of the music is excessive. It's like overly like intense. And I don't know that I quite agree with them, but I see what they mean. There's at least one scene where it's, yeah. Now, there is some black comedy. Some humor in how Eric deals with the bullies. And yeah, so on violence, the fights get violent and bloody. Some say it's too much, others say it's not enough. Compared to the book, it's very mild. But the yeah, it's it's definitely something. Yeah, see here it has a rating of no younger. No children younger than 11. I think I would probably say you should be an adult before you start watching something like this. Now, the, the violence, the way it's handled is appropriate. It serves a purpose. Sometimes it's cathartic, happening to characters we don't like. And other times it's unpleasant for the viewer. You know, the, this movie, like the movie Monster, we don't, you know, some of the time, we don't enjoy the violence, we just want it to stop. It goes for that, and it accomplishes it. And if you need, like, a, if you want more detail on the, the violence, the IMDb Parents Guide has more detail. Now, the movie is sometimes serious, at times somewhat light some gritty realism excuse me the level of realism is very high and there are you know other than the fact that on this school in this school the the discipline is meted out by the oldest students rather than the teachers and the teachers don't you know, they just accept that the students other than that, you know, once you've gotten past that, there's very little that is legitimately hard to believe. For those bothered by things in movies that are hard to believe. Some people say that it's slow. I mean, it's not fast by Hollywood standards, but there's always some development of plot and or character. Now, the, the movie is an hour and 49 minutes long, and it is worth the investment of time. If you're not interested, maybe 30 minutes in, the movie might not be your thing. Now, let's see. Yeah, so... Yeah, so the, the best thing about the movie is the, the, let's see, yeah, the, the, how, how honest it is about how harsh the culture of boarding schools is, and I would say it's worth watching the movie at least once to experience that, and honestly, I would say it's worth owning so you can rewatch it, and that is a thing I will definitely say. I'm not sure that it that older students were able to get away with such flagrant, you know, in the in 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 the real school that Yang Gilu was in when he was a teenager. I'm not sure that the teachers just ignored that the older students were this extreme. But let's not pretend, like, I've spoken with several people who have been to boarding schools, and it is the moment that the teacher isn't paying attention to the students, they are vicious to each other, you know, so it is not something that, but, but the, you know, the kinds of things that happen in this movie, and even more so in the book, 
it's hard to believe that the the older students would be doing it and the teachers would just accept that that's anyway now the yeah trying to think of the worst thing i could say about this i mean i will say that both movie and book can be read as being in favor of using violence against the bullies, including very brutal, unrelenting violence. And like I said, I don't think that's... If, if someone, if you can... If you can compel someone to stop being violent and or a bully without using violence, you should do it without using violence. But of course, the, the book and movie would say these are people you can't convince without using violence against them. But it is, yeah, I, I, the answer to bullying in schools is not for all the, the people who are being bullied to get really jacked and start beating up their bullies. You know, that is not, so, so it's a little unfortunate that it is, yeah. Now, others have said that it's predictable, badly acted, and the dialogue is bad. I don't really agree with them on that, but, you know, if... Yeah, it's possible that you'll feel that way about it. I was most worried that the situation were presented with simply being too cartoonish for anyone to take it seriously, and thus for people... One second. Yeah, it's too cartoonish to be taken seriously and too cartoonish for us, you know, for, for people to learn from that so we can improve the culture at boarding schools. I'd like to think that boarding schools are a lot better today. Most of the things I've heard about boarding schools are from decades ago. Now, yeah, so... Before watching a movie, the thing I was most looking forward to was a realist realistic and unflinching depiction of how cruel boarding school culture can be, and the movie exceeded my expectations on that. And I would say it's worth seeking out other work by, you know, director, writer, the, the actors, they're all very talented. Now, the movie is entertaining to watch, and it is also actually a good movie. I recommend this to anyone who cares about how harsh boarding school culture is, or at the very least was back then, and for those, I, I know some people say that if things are better now than they were before, then we shouldn't care. It's important to acknowledge how bad things were, because sometimes the bad things leave scars you know, sometimes physical, sometimes emotional, and it's important to understand when dealing with people, you know, when, when you're, if you're having a conversation with someone who was beaten, then you, you know, you want to avoid saying something or body language that could make them feel threatened and trigger their anxiety over it. Now, the trailer does not give away too much. It does give you a good idea of what the movie is like. So if you like the trailer, you are very likely to also like the movie. That's a lot of like, in a very short, in a relatively short sentence. And the cover and poster do not give away too much. And they give you a decent idea of what the movie is like. So if you like the cover and or poster, you might like the movie. If you don't like it, you might not, you might not like the movie. The tomato meter is 68%. Oh, wait, sorry. Did I say 2003? Why did I say 2005? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, th I'm thinking of other movies that I'm going to be doing videos on down the line. No, sorry. This is from 2003, not 2005. Anyway. And, yeah, that's based on 38 reviews, and I, did, I can't 
I can't see how many of them were positive, but anyway, it has an 87% audience score with over 10,000 audience ratings. And yeah, so the critics' consensus is Evil's attempts to unpack the causes and effects of violence aren't always successful, but the well-acted end result still has an unsettling impact. And I think that is pretty much where, you know, how the, the rating that it should have and Metascore is 61 with a user rating of 7.6. 61, that's, I would not give it anywhere near that low. 7.6 sounds pretty good. And on IMDb it has, it has 7.8. So this is one of the cases where, excuse me, regardless of which website you check, you know, the, the aggregators agree that users really like this movie and at least on Rotten Tomatoes, most critics did as well. And let's see. Yeah, so basically, if a piece of fiction is doing its job right, you get a stronger emotional response from watching the movie or reading the book, etc., than if you just read the Wikipedia summary. And yeah, that's very true with with this one. It 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 places significant weight on the the fights and such. Now, yeah, so I give this eight explorations of violence in schools out of ten. And let's see. Yeah, so that brings us to the spoiler section. Now that we're getting into the spoiler section, I'll probably exclusively be referring to Silverstone as Shitterstone, since while I do disagree with some of what Eric does, dumping shit on Shitterstone, considering what he's getting revenge for, I don't really have a problem with. That's, yeah, very, very cathartic. And the reason I didn't refer to him as Shitterton in the review itself is that I didn't want to give that away to people who haven't watched the movie yet. It's... That's that's too good to, to spoil. And that brings us to the thoughts section. Start. Disclaimers. If you don't care about these disclaimers, I'll try to keep them short and long. After my list may vary, you can skip right ahead to the section of your choice through the description box. I often try to talk very fast during the disclaimers, since a lot of it is very standard information. I'm not going to keep speaking as fast as I sometimes do during the section once I get into the video itself. With that said, please do note that some of the specific discussion of the room may be in this section. I realize the video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. So yeah, from here on out, spoilers for both book and movie. Not going to warn before I give spoilers. And but if I do spoil something other than this or its book, I will hold up an index finger and warn verbally. And, yeah, so this video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. The most visual it gets is when I sometimes act something out. So feel free to watch something visual, such as clips from a subject in another tab. I won't mind. I'll know. I, I mean, I won't know, of course. I'm not, I'm not spying on you right now. I can't see you through your webcam right now. And... Wonder why you keep checking your phone. I guess I'm just not that entertaining. Whatever. And since we are still dealing with Corona, I want to say during this video, it is possible I, I think I did already touch my face. Um, I want to assure you, I washed my hands since the last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again before going out. So, let's see. Yeah, so content warning and or trigger warning, violent bullying, including things that you could get seriously injured from, and honestly, some things that you could even die from. Now, I don't have problems with violence and gore in general. The thing is one of my favorite horror movies in which in general, also Cronenberg's The Fly Videodrome. And... So, yeah, I, other than saying shitter to stone a bunch of times, it's possible that I'll also swear other, yeah, so, you know, if that's something that's going to bother you, that's, that's a thing. 
Now, I got this movie on sale, so anything negative is saying this is not a lot of bitterness. I don't feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. It's not that I'm upset at how it compares to the book that it's adapting. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I say in this are for criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what it was trying to achieve, etc. Instead of me quoting all the lines I love from this movie, let me just say here that I loved every line they put in the IMDb Marvel quote section. So you can just go look that up instead of me sitting here quoting all of them. Let's see. Um, so the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of it's analysis, some of it's MSC3, Rift and other jokes, etc. Now, the, yeah, so there's time codes for all the sections in the description box. The first thought section is thoughts I have while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as, as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. Excuse me. The section section is, second section is thoughts I have before watching. And the final section, again, stuff I think is worthwhile to get into on Rotten Tomatoes, my critic, and me, and Wikipedia. Now, sometimes in these videos, I go into whether the movie appears to have empathy for the least likable characters and whether or not I think they made the right choice. I don't think it really has empathy for the bullies or the stepfather, and I would say that is, yeah, I, I don't think it would really have made a lot of sense to express a lot. I mean, it brings up the idea, but the, but the movie isn't really saying that, yeah. Now, and like I said in the, you know, in the review itself, I find it extremely difficult to empathize with bullies myself. I'm not saying it's necessarily always wrong to empathize with bullies, but I do find it extremely difficult. In part because, despite how much I was bullied, I never became a bully myself. And there are a lot of people who think very little of me. So if I can do it, most other people should be able to as well. Now, let's see. That is it for this section now oh sorry actually a little bit more yeah so the first time i think i might have watched this before 2010 but i definitely that was one of the first times that i watched it now that gets us to Notes taken while watching. Pretty good opening, smoothly and swiftly sets up the core concept. Very early on, Eric is a smartass with every adult he speaks to, but when his mother instills in him that, she's, that it is extremely important he finishes his education at his boarding school, he does pay attention to her. You have to go four miles away from school to ride, and that is where they are when Eric later on, threatens to kill him. Excuse me. I appreciate that here at the start, Shitterston is seemingly very nice to Eric, so very welcoming, and I, f I think it's like that in the book. C certainly, at first, he, someone is being very welcoming to him. I forget if it's Shitterston or someone else. And Eric and Pierre immediately get along, despite their numerous differences. And that's another thing I really appreciate. Both, both the book and the movie do this, and do it well. It's important to make clear that Eric is not, like, the, the that there's one of the teachers who is basically a Nazi. Like, fairly, I mean, he's, he certainly ascribes to the whole racial purity idea. 
it's important to make sure that the, you know, when you read the book or watch the movie, you don't stop and think, wait, is Eric Nazi adjacent, Nazi adjacent himself? Because, you know, the, he's, he's described as intelligent and very good at violence. And, you know, he's a, he is a prime specimen in some ways. You know, he, he, let's say, let's see, he does, yeah, I think he does break the, the school record on how fast he swims. So, you know, it's, it's kind of important to, to underline he's not, he doesn't think he's better than people who are not physically adept. Basically, he himself is physically adept in part so he can defend himself from people who use violence against him. But he doesn't think that you're lesser or deserve violence if you're not strong enough to fight back. To avoid smelling like smoke, they have to take some pine in their mouths. Me, I think I just quit smoking. And I say that with full respect for just how difficult that is. I appreciate that for how much the movie did cut from the novel, it does include the Nazi teacher. It, you know, it's something that a lot of people aren't very comfortable admitting, but yeah, there were people who were Nazis, or at least believed in some of the Nazi ideas, after the end of the, world, of the Second World War. You know, that it didn't just go away. And one of the young women are immediately ready to take care of the injury on the kid's head, but no one tried to stop it from happening. And Eric swims almost as fast as the, the record. Pierre tells him he shouldn't stand out. I appreciate that the swimming was kept intact from the book, because it does do, like, at the end of the day, it's not like Eric does absolutely nothing. I'm not saying that the, you know, some people are bullied even though they did absolutely nothing to, you know, attract attention. And, and some are bullied even though the things they did that attracted negative attention were something they couldn't help. But Eric isn't afraid of bullies. He's not afraid of authority figures. He doesn't you know, it, it would be one thing if he, like, won the swimming by cheating. Like, if he did something to one of the other students to slow them down or something. But he doesn't. He just, he wins because he's better. You know, that's the, the one of the, I think it's the gym teacher who says to Eric, ah, one second, Jim, I guess, Jim is... A democracy, you know, which I think he means meritocracy, but whatever. I mean, if it were a democracy, it would mean that people voted for who the best gym person was. I think he means meritocracy, but whatever. I guess he's saying dem democracy rather than, like, dictatorship. You know, in a dictatorship, the, the you know, the, the winner is... Excuse me, is always going to be the dictator himself. You know, in fact, he may have no anus, as the North Korean government s claims about... Ah, what's his face? Kim... Il? Right? Kim Jun is the... I, I forget. The... the um, anyway, yeah. yeah I, th I think that's what he's getting at. It is open to everyone, like democracy, but I feel like it would have made more sense to say it's a meritocracy. It's not about, it, especially considering that some people do fare better in a democ democratic election because they start out with more money. And he's specifically saying starting out with more money doesn't mean you win. So anyway, but the, excuse me, it's not, it's not a story about Eric being singled out because despite the fact that he never does anything, is about him being singled out 
because what he does challenges them. When he swims better than the guy who donated money to the school, who expects to win, that doesn't, you know, that, that he's, he's embarrassing the people who have more power than him, and that's what they can't stand. And that is something, I, I think an argument, there probably are some stories where it's people who don't actually intentionally go outside of the, the accepted norms. Thinking about it, I think that my best enemy, maybe? I, I forget, but the... And certainly, hold me tight didn't really... Anyway, and show me love, she's just being herself. And anyway, yeah, the... It, it is like the... the ah, one second. It is... Yeah, it's, it's not a story about someone singled out for no reason. It's a story about someone who faces backlash for no reason other than that he's good at what he does. You know, and that's something they can't stand. The, if, if you as a younger student is better than... I see better than the older students... I mean, in the book, he specifically has to fight some of the older students. Uh, beat them in swimming, I mean. And he struggles, but he does manage it, if I recall. But, but yeah, you know, basically, they don't like that he's doing well, even though he's not doing anything wrong. And that's the thing. Like, some people will, you know, some people in school, some people in workplaces... If there's someone they don't like who's doing well, they have to try to, to ruin it for them. You know, instead of just saying, you know what, maybe I don't like them, but they're doing a good job. You know, you don't... The, these people act like you're asking them to, to kiss your feet. It's just, I'm following the rules. I'm doing well, you know, anyway. And Eric calls home, talks to his mother, and it appears that he doesn't tell her about the things that are wrong. Yeah, based on the rest of the movie. I, f I forget if that's in the book as well. But yeah, several times he does call her and almost say about the things that are wrong. And he does come home for Christmas and not say so. You know, basically, he, he does want to... He, he feels like he's betraying her if he's if he tells her that things are bad. Because then she'll probably insist that he leave the school. And then what? Where is he supposed to go? As others have pointed out, the first fight in the square is practically the opposite in the book. I guess for the movie, they're trying to say that he's avoiding violence for as long as possible. And honestly, the book has so much violence that I can understand the change. And just like in the book, Eric points out he shouldn't both get a punishment and have to apologize for what he did. It should be either, you know, not both. And that, of course, leads them to punish him even more. It's not about justice. It's about breaking his spirit. That's the thing they can't stand. How difficult a time they have with breaking his spirit. The amount of punishment for something so small is ridiculous. It's completely disproportionate. He swore twice. He refused to clean, you know, this dozen pair of filthy shoes. And for that, he's given four weekends and work. So it's, it's completely, but it's just because they have to show him that they, you know, that he doesn't have the power in the situation. That's all it's about. And the gym teacher tells Eric that weightlifting will, hit, will improve his swimming. I thought that that meant we were going to see him... Actually, is it lift weights or is it pump weights? I forget. Well... 
pretend I'm saying the right one if I'm not. You know, I expected him to later be seen lifting weights, like in the book. In the book, it, it talks about that he, you know, he lifts weights. That's how he's able to beat up his stepdad at the very end, because his stepfather is bigger than him, older than him. And by the end of the book, their, their muscles are maybe roughly equivalent. Maybe Eric has some more. But, yeah, I don't think we see not even a brief shot of him. So it's a little strange. There, there are a few things where they, the characters will bring it, will say something that's in the book, but in the book it leads to something, and in the movie they remove the thing it leads to. Anyway. After he's been hours digging the hole, they tell him to fill the hole back up, and it's raining, and just, yeah. The, the, the other guy doesn't even know how to pronounce Oscar Wilde's last name. Has the teacher given the go-ahead on him being dead or gay? And Marja tells Eric to meet by seven. And, like I said, they're sweet together, and Eric blocks the door, but they are able to force it open. Lucky for Eric, and unlucky for Shiverston, Shiverston sleeps on his back with his mouth open. And, you know, in, in addition to, like, in, in the book, the there's some, you know, apparently everyone knew about the the shitters and shit in a bucket thing happening to two shitters and not the not him throwing it into Pierre's and ah one second Eric's room. You know, in the, in the movie it's not completely clear if the if anyone else does know about it already before Eric starts saying does someone smell shit? You know, but the the but, but yeah, in both cases, you know, he starts saying something smells like shit. Is it you, Shitterston? You smell like shit, you know. And no matter how much Shitterston punches Eric, to the point where it draws blood, like both of them have blood on their shirts, Eric's face is completely bloodied. Eric, he, you know, he continues to take it. He doesn't apologize. He doesn't ask for mercy. And finally, it is called off by, I'm guessing, the principal. Who are you, really? I'm sure it's reckoning. And the gym teacher continues to encourage Eric to fight and not let the other guy win in swimming. Shitterston has mastered the sarcastic slow clap. And Eric comes home for Christmas and his stepfather's angry over the grade he got for behavior. I don't know why they put it so late into the movie, Eric being whipped and then being made to say we're friends again by his stepfather, that's from the book. And in the book, it's the first thing we're told. You know, it's not literally like the first line, but it's, you know, the, the book opens with a description of all the things that, you know, the, the kinds of things the stepfather hits him for and the, the things he uses to hit him with. And yeah, you know, in the book, it's it's the first thing. In in the movie, it's an hour and it's an hour and a minute, so more than halfway through the movie. And back at the boarding school, Eric keeps trying to get to talk to Marja. And Pierre gives Eric a law book. And points out boarding school laws should not supersede the laws of the country. And Shitterston is going to punish Pierre, who points out he hasn't done anything wrong, which just leads to more punishment. And the other student peeing in Pierre's bed is also right out of the book. And Pierre points out that they're only, they're they're trying to get to Eric by abusing Pierre. 
Marja tells Eric they can't be together because of the consequences. And they try and threaten a confession out of Pierre, and Eric tells the guy to put out his cigarette on him instead of Pierre. And the guy doesn't know how to react. You know, and, and eventually he does put out the cigarette on Eric's chest, and Eric refuses to show pain. He won't give him the pleasure. And that's, again, like in the book, that happens a bunch of times. Like, people causing Eric a lot of pain, and him saying, was that it? And the, the, yeah, I, excuse me, I don't know why it's in so, I don't know, I, you know, Pierre points out right after, it's, it's, does he use the word psychotic, maybe, some, something, you know, to, to take punishment like that and not react, you know, and I think that's probably why it's in so little of the movie. And Pierre tries to figure out why Sherston is so evil, wondering if perhaps he used to be a victim, like he's now victimizing people. And Pierre and Eric talk about how it's going to go in the square. And that's also, they, they trimmed it down, but it is from the book. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't know why. I'm not pointing out every single thing that's right. That's exactly the way it is in the book. And Pierre hits Shitterson right in the face. And even if they, even as they continue beating Pierre, he keeps provoking Shitterston. And they make Eric put in the spikes. And then Shitterston tries to intimidate Eric when he's tied on the ground. And they, they pour the, the water on him first. Let's see, first it was boiling, then it was freezing. In the book, the... You know, he straight up points out that he could have died there if Marja hadn't shown up and untied him. The movie doesn't really, like, it plays some very dramatic, intense music as some of it is happening, but... Did, wait, did one of them say he, he'll die if you leave him or something? I don't know. It, it hit stronger in, in, when I was listening to the book than when I was watching the movie. For me and Marja you know yeah Marja and Eric end up in the same bed and see, yeah and he finds the letter Pierre left behind the gym teacher try, talks to Eric trying to get information about Shearson crossing the line and I think yeah in in the book if I recall he straight up says you know he I, I forget if he Let's see, I forget if he tells the gym teacher, or he's just thinking to himself, but he's like, if I told the gym teacher the details, that wouldn't make things any better. And the teacher doesn't understand, not the gym teacher, but the other one doesn't understand that Eric couldn't have done more to protect Pierre than he already did. And Eric challenges one of the guys who smiles, not realizing what he's going to do. And Eric starts psyching out the students, something he does very frequently in the book. He, he tells them exactly how he's going to injure them, and then he, he does most of what he said he was going to do. In, in the book, there's actually this, like, you know, he, he thinks to himself, Ah, why did I say I was going to break his arm? And there's this slow, he, he says, I'm going to count to ten. And if you haven't crawled out by then, I'm going to break your arm. And he counts and he thinks to himself, why did I, I shouldn't have gone that far, you know. And, and the, so, you know, yeah, he does sometimes do things wrong. He does sometimes, you know, kind of cross the line. And let's see, if I recall, just barely the, the other kid crawls out before, right before he says 10. So he doesn't end up breaking his arm, which is also, that would be very difficult to do. 
and Eric is told Marjo was fired, and the guy handing out letters tells Shiversman Eric got a letter from Finland, and Eric and the principal talk. And Eric hears the words of Pierre and Marja in his head. And Eric, Eric apparently did break that kid's nose, just like he said he would. He's got, I forget, bandages? I feel like that's not what it's called, but yeah. And Eric calls his mother, but can't bring himself to tell her. And we see Shitterstun with a horse, and that tells us they're now several miles away from the school. And Apparently some viewers, I guess, forgot the thing about how they were, excuse me, earlier, it was said that, yeah, apparently. And Eric tells Shitterston what he's going to do him again, you know, right out of the book, thre threatening to kill him. In the book, he makes it a point to throw the ring into the vomit. Now. And Eric gets out the business card of the lawyer and points out to the principal that his civil rights have been violated. And then the lawyer straight up shows up and the lawyer threatens that a journalist will come by and describe the school in the paper, which is fairly close to what happened in real life. That's what led to the school getting shut down. And the lawyer is a smart ass like Eric and he, I forget what it's called, you know, if... You know, he's, he's got the cigarette, and he does the, the thing where some of the ash from the end of it, yeah, that ends up on the floor instead of him going for, like, a proper, ah, I don't know what they're called in English, sorry. And on the way home, Eric rips off the mark from the school's most uniform. And the stepfather tries really hard to provoke him. And Eric confronts the stepfather. You don't see exactly what happens with the stepfather. If I recall, it's, that's just like in the book. In, in the book, it's the very last thing. It does make a lot of sense to, in the movie, end on the shot of Eric riding his bike on a sunny day right after we've seen him meet back up with Pierre. It's a more hopeful less revenge-focused ending, and excuse me, that is, uh, what's the word? Again, trying to make it more palatable. So yeah, with end credits, it's an hour and 49 minutes long. Without them, it's an hour and 45 and a half minutes long. Notes taken before watching. Yeah, actually, I, I went through all the different people who worked on this that I had seen. The only ones that I've seen any other work by is, you know, again, director Michael Hofström. Wells directed 1408, and the cinematographer also did cinematography on The Girl Who Played With Fire and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, but not The Girl With the Dragon Tattoo. I guess they switched between... Anyway, but yeah, those. that's the only other thing that I know. Yeah. So, yeah, some people said that the lawyer ending was basically like a deus ex machina. It was too convenient. And, you know, ultimately, let's see. It's, it's somewhat similar to what happened in real life, I think. Yeah. In the book, Eric cries sometimes, such as when losing Marja. I don't think he cries at all in the movie, and that is something, I don't know, the, 
there would probably be some uh, what's it called some some would think that that made him weak the square in the book and film are almost two men enter one man leaves also known as Thunderdome rules it is however not very similar to two people enter three people leave also known as delivery room rules Sometimes the upperclassmen students will make really outrageous demands of Eric trying to push his buttons. Of course, they would probably call it tit for tat, which, me personally, I mean, if you're going to get a tattoo, I guess the chest is a fine place. Something that doesn't exactly help the movie or the book on as far as the possibility of glorifying violence, the, the violence that Eric himself deals out goes, is the fact that Eric literally tells Shitterston, I'm not like you, when revealing that he's not going to kill him. I realize that leaving him tied up on the ground soaked could have killed him, but still. Now, let's see. Apparently someone, one, one, at least one of the reviews, said that Marge was pregnant, even though it specifically says she's not pregnant and she's not pregnant in the book either it's pretty obvious that Eric is not just going to stand idly by and accept the bullying for the entire movie that just goes without saying like a person silent using the bathroom now the yeah so on YouTube there were not very many videos, but they did have a trailer for this. It's effective. It gives you a good idea of what the movie is like. There is a commentary track, but it's all in Swedish. I don't speak Swedish, so I can't comment on it at all. Now, the... Yeah, so the DVD has The Truth Behind Evil, which is 23 and a half minutes long. And, yeah, the... You know, Jan Gilu says the crucifixion, including pouring water on him, is one of his strongest memories. He decided he had to become a lawyer to take down the school. It's extremely important to the author of the novel. The film version comes out great. The actor playing the principal says that the principal just doesn't get it. It's after World War II. He's talking to this 15-year-old about him being evil. Novel's author confirms that him being kicked out of high school and then being blacklisted from all the other high schools is true. The director said if one million people read the book, then that may be one million people who don't like the movie. Which I, I think he was saying that, you know, it's important for him to do a good job so that, you know, all those people don't end up not liking the movie. And the actor playing Shitterston Talking about the buddy system, he says he takes advantage of it to get power. And the novel author says, I'm the only person who came out of Sunhill and succeeded. The rest were broken by the system. The actor playing the stepfather says that the reason his character hits Eric is he's jealous of Eric. He considers him a potential competitor. When the novel author and the actor for Eric meet, they're both awkward about the role he's going to play. The author does feel that the actor is right for the role. And let's see. Since they had been trying to make the movie for 20 years, the author felt of, of the book felt like it wouldn't happen until they did start filming. And, yeah, so the novel author says it wasn't, you know, I'm calling him novel author so that I, I, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name right. It feels disrespectful. He says, it wasn't enough that we could take a beating. I could do that before I got there. That wasn't the problem. But we also had to abuse the other students. And right before they shoot the fight in the square, I, I forget exactly who... I'm oh, sorry, I'm not 100% certain if it's the director or maybe the uh, an assistant or something, but 
you know, he says, cell phones do not exist in the 1950s, so we're going to turn them down before we shoot, or turn, turn them off before we shoot, something like that. And the novel author says, violence is a mix of aggression and fear. When violence succeeds, there is a certain sense of happiness. When you say that, people think you're crazy. To defend myself, I say I haven't done it in 35 years. I wouldn't like the feeling, but I know it's there. The feeling people who use violence... Uh, let's see... I said that, you know, people cannot be totally evil, that's not real, but evil is often combined with stupidity, and that's the worst kind. If I had become a lawyer, I would possibly still be complaining and trying to get rid of schools that are like this, but journalism brought down the school. Because of the Sunny Sun Hill schools sink like Atlantis when I was 22, so I'm happy that I can, that I became a journalist instead of a lawyer. One of the crew members points out that the script calls for snow, and it actually did snow right before they filmed. Sometimes things just work out. Okay, there's three and a half minutes of deleted scenes. Let's see. I'm starting to get a little back pain, so I think I'm just going to go quickly through. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I don't think the... I, th I think they're, they're good... I don't, um, it's, it's one of those cases where I, I wish that they had made a DVD where you could click, you know, press watch with deleted scenes integrated, but on this you can't. Now, let's see, okay, so the, the audio book itself. And I forget if I've stated, but it came out in 1981. I think I will. Let's see. Yeah, the first few minutes of the book are just describing the ways that Eric's father hits him, including with a whip or riding crop. I forget what it's called. And what area, or sorry, what Eric does to avoid crying. It's legitimately hard to listen to, intentionally so. And. We don't hear the father's thought process the way we do Eric's, but from what the father does, there's no indication that he considers whether or not Eric benefits from the beatings, whether or not there might be a better way to raise him, to teach him manners. And let's see. Let's see. I already talked about the teacher with the stick. And let's Yeah, in the book, there's also the Eric has a younger brother who extorts him because he knows that the father hits Eric frequently. And let's see. Yeah, actually, when the father hits him, his mother comes in to clean the wound with warm water. And he gets a fever from it. Let's see. Yeah, and the the let's see, Eric psychs out the music teacher, tells him, You think you have power because you can hit us, but you don't. And the, the principal tells him that if he doesn't apologize to the music teacher, he'll get a bad grade in manners. 
And if he gets one more of those, he's going to be thrown out of school. Which really tells you, you know, literally, he just, he didn't want, he, he doesn't like that a teacher is threatening to hit the kids. And that's, the, the principal can't stand that. Now, let's see. The, the principal asked, has your father not taught you to respect adults? How little he understands, Eric thinks. Now, let's see. Let's see. The, so, um, yeah, in the, in the book, again, it's possible it's in the movie and the subtitler didn't pick up on it. I at least don't think it was in the, the subtitles in the movie. But the, the gym teacher, I think it is, tells Eric, you're a winner. We need more people like you, which is obviously, you know, exactly what the, the, one second, the, the, the principal of the first school says, Eric, you are evil. We don't need more people like you. And the, yeah, so the gym teacher says, Eric, you're a winner. We need more people like you. Now, let's see. Yeah, so a lot of stuff is like in the book, only it's more detailed. Yeah, in the in the actual book, the you know Eric. Yeah, Eric keeps calling Silver. Yeah, Silverstein Shitterson. At first, he doesn't get a reaction. Then he asks if they're getting chocolate pudding for dessert, and Shitterson punches Eric repeatedly, knocking a tooth loose and breaking his nose, and he keeps punching him until he stops, tired. And then Eric says, you smell like shit. So Shitterston punches him more, and eventually a girl shouts to stop, and the principal stops Shitterston. Eric spits a tooth and some blood onto Shitterston's plate. Let's see. And, uh, yeah, so the... Eric takes a cab to the hospital. ER, I guess. And the and the let's see. This why am I suddenly so sleepy? I feel like I slept. I should have gotten enough sleep. Anyway. Let's see. I guess it's uh, yeah, the the Ryan George just put up a video of like, you know, this is orientation for when you become an adult and if if you sleep a lot, you're tired. If you don't sleep very much, you're tired. Anyway, let's see. In the in the book, yeah, Eric goes to the emergency room, and he's you know there's this expectation that he's just going to tell the doctor, I fell. The doctor doesn't even wait for Eric to say I fell. He says, Let me guess, you fell. And the doctor knows about the school, wants to close it. He calls it a Nazi school. Eric says he needs to be at the school for another year and a half to get an education. And let's see. Eric walks up to Shearson, saying, Has Shearson not bathed yet? And the day after that, he tells Shearson that he stinks again. And the counselor try to push Eric to confess. Confess. He refuses and says something that sounds like a threat of Shitterson. Now let's see.
yeah, the the crucifixion is very similar to the movie. Two buckets boiling water, one bucket freezing water. And yeah, Eric lies there thinking he'll die from exposure. And then Marja cuts him loose. He walks home and he finds that Pierre was tied up. And at first, Eric couldn't even untie him, so he takes a hot shower, clothes on. And Eric dreams that he shoots the council. Now, because of language, yeah, I'm not 100% certain if what he imagined dreamt shooting him with was a machine gun, a submachine gun, or an assault rifle, but something. Yeah, and they start bullying Pierre instead of Eric. And Pierre ultimately leaves. And that was another thing. I think I saw at least one uh, critic say, well, if Pierre can leave the school, why doesn't Eric? Well, Pierre's father is rich. They, he says that. He specifically says that his father is ridiculously wealthy. You know, he's, he's at that school because his father thinks that it being more expensive than a regular school means that it's better, which, yeah, a lot of people think that, but it's just... You know, it means they have more money, it means they have more resources, but it doesn't make them better schools. And, you know, Eric's not going to ask Pierre to ask his father for money so he can go to a school. You know, that's not... The, I mean, the fact that Pierre is being forced to be at the school, even though he doesn't want to, tells us that he's not going to care if Pierre says that, you know, someone is going to a school to do it. Anyway... And, yeah, so then the part of the book that gets kind of, heh, yeah, if, you, if you've if you been watching this video and you already read the book, some of you were, like, sitting, yeah, when are you going to, when you get to, yeah, let's, uh, let's hear it. I am not going to make excuses for the fact that the book, I mean, the author can't possibly have thought very many people would take it seriously, but he describes that in the last chunk of the book, the the Eric starts wearing a mask, and he'll attack council members. You know, the, the he'll he'll they'll either be by themselves or there'll be two of them together. And he can take out two of them. And so he, he you know, he, he breaks their noses so they have to go to the hospital in the middle of the night. And because the council can't find the mask, he didn't hide it in his room. He hid it elsewhere. They can't prove that he did it. And because of that, he kind of, like, he can, he can just keep doing it for a while. And it's just, look. I was a teenager too. He he didn't write the book when he was a teenager, but he did write it about a very personal experience that happened when he was a teenager. If I were to write a very personal book about the way I was bullied when I was a teenager, I think there's a chance that I would maybe have to have to really apply myself to not turn any of it into a vigilante story, but it's just I mean, he comes short of wearing, like, a, a cape or having, like, a, a symbol on his chest or something. But, like, come on, man. That didn't happen. You, we all know that it, everyone in the helicopter know, knows that it didn't happen. Everyone outside of the helicopter knows that that didn't happen. 
Now, let's see. And yeah, so the, the very end of the, let's see. Oh, right, right, the, yeah. And in the, in the book, when after Eric graduates, he holds up the mask and everyone starts applauding and just like, come on, man. This is just, yeah. For most of the novel, he didn't write something that outlandish. So, anyway. And yeah, he drives away in a cab, and at home, his father doesn't like him being with Marja. Hits him on the nose perfectly. Eric says it's none of his business. They go to his room. Eric locks the door with his key, and Eric strategizes, but now his internal monologue refers to his father as the man, like he usually does with others he beats. You know, oh, I, I think it's the only time in the entire book where he refers to his father. I'm, I'm fairly certain, actually, that it's the one, only time he refers to his father as the man. Usually it will be, you know, he has to beat up a boxer. The, actually, I think there he calls him the boxer. But yeah, you know, for a lot of them, but here, like, at the end, it's the man, like, and, and he calls him evil. He tells him how he'll beat him. Father lowers his shoehorn instead of hitting him. Eric continues threatening him, screw, no, excuse me, how he'll beat him. The father gets increasingly scared. That's it, yeah. In the final words, Eric walks towards the man. And... Yeah, it's not clear if he does beat the father, but it sounds like he does. It's just, it doesn't describe the beating itself. Be very likely because the beating pans out the way that Eric told the stepfather that it would. And an afterward describes shutting down the school with because of the, the bad, you know, all, all the negative attention from the press. Critic sites, MV, and Wikipedia. So I noted 171 different things. Let's see. So I am going to scroll through and see if I can find there are Yeah, and apparently, you know, some people called Fight Club at a boarding school. I mean, I guess I can see it a little bit. But... Now, let's see. Yeah, so the... Yeah, this was apparently the first movie that the the actor who plays Eric was in. Huh. The Dead Pugilist Society. That's pretty good. Now. A commentary on the troubling gray area between acceptable and unacceptable forms of violence, especially where the molding of boys into real men is concerned.
The way it plays out, evil feeds the audience's bloodlust as much as it decries the worst acts of its characters. I can't completely deny that. So unsubtle as to verge on the comical. I wonder if that person read the book. But yeah, it's for sure the movie can also be very unsubtle. Hofstrom never finds the shades in his morality tales. While Wilson is an intensely charismatic actor, all he can do is respond to relentless escalating tortures. It is immensely unpleasant for him, and frankly, not a whole lot better for us. Yeah, there is some truth to that. Guess that is the milieu owes something to Lindsay Anderson's if which I haven't watched. Red, I think it's a movie, but evil is less anti-authority than pro-confrontation. That again is yeah. Uh, let's see. Right, so the, yeah, at least one user review says that he found it frustrating that the characters just keep trying to one-up each other, and that is, yeah. Some people when reviewing this refer to Eric himself as a bully. I mean, I guess because he gets into fights that he doesn't lose. I don't know. I, I wouldn't really call him a bully. Now, let's see. So... Yeah, several people did not like the ending. Right, so yeah, so IMDb, the tagline is, it's time to take a stand. Now, let's see the, yeah, so IMDb trivia. After the film's final fight scene, Pollock at Tampa? asked a makeup girl to take a Polaroid of him in his post-fight makeup, which featured blood coming out of his mouth and nostrils, he gave the picture to his mother, who had it framed and still has it on her bedside table. Let's see. I'm not 100% certain who he plays. I guess maybe the... The guy that Eric breaks his nose, I'm not entirely sure.
Johan Rabeus, who plays Eric's abusive stepfather, went to a boarding school much like the one in this film, and he claimed he lost his soul there. A hundred and twenty people turned up for audition for the role of Eric Ponty. Now, let's see. Okay, so let's see then. Originally, the this was going to be a TV show. Hofström felt he was not ready for such an extensive production. So he waited a few years to eventually convince the producer to make it a feature film. Yeah, and the budget was twenty million Swedish krona. Yeah, so the let's see something else. Right, so. The next chunk is going to be reviews I found via the movie's IMDb external reviews section. Now, there were 70, and I was able to copy in 14. The rest are dead links, languages I don't speak, that kind of thing. Now, let's see. Yeah, so this person says, based on the autobiographical book by Yang Lu, Evil tells the story of the coming age of Eric, who's full of hate and anger. And yeah, it says he takes out his frustration on random victims at school. I, again, I think the subtitler didn't pick up everything. I, I did not get that from... But yeah, it might be true in the movie. In the book, it's never random. It's always one of the following. Let's see. Asserting unfair violence and threats of violence should not... Uh, yeah, should never be part of being an authority figure. Him maintaining his position as the most feared violent authority figure, such as by beating up the former leader of the gang he becomes leader of, beating people who refuse to pay any protection money, since that way there would be less violence than if someone who was unfair that, you know, was the leader, or if it's him defending himself. But, yeah. Yeah, one person said it should be called evil, it should be called sadism. Because it's about sadism and not evil. Now, let's see. If there's more. Okay, and the. Uh, yeah, so. Following is the IMDb user reviews. Normally, I would copy in the 100 most useful voted, but there were only 97 in total, so I copied all of them. Now. Let's see, so I'm just... I guess that is... 
I kind of like, there was at least one reviewer who simply titled their review, Evil is Good. That's, that's quite clever. Now. Almost done reading. Harry Puncher and the Order of the Meanest. Yes, this person says it shouldn't have been more than 80 minutes. They stretch it with implausible melodrama. Obvious. Yes. Yeah. And. And, yeah, one person titled there review or how I learned to stop worrying and love fascism and let's see. yeah one of them is you know not a role model for bully teens Almost all the way through. Just gonna go ahead and do the last little bit. Now, Dead Nazi Society is one. Yeah, some people could really relate to the movie. Some people found it very shocking. Did not know that that was what it was like at boarding schools. And again, it is at least slightly exaggerated. I mean, honestly, if, if I had been like the publisher of the book, I would have tried really hard to talk them out of just now let's let's please the mask vigilante let's let's just not and say we did and those are all of my notes and I am going to go rest my back so I hope you enjoy watching as I enjoy watching and recording and I'll catch you next time